Recently, the three major Japanese car companies have all announced their monthly report cards in China in January 2023, and their sales were all Waterloo. Toyota fell by 23.5% year-on-year, while Honda and Nissan fell by 56.2% and 64.4% respectively. It can be seen that the sales decline of Japanese auto companies in the Chinese market is inevitable, which is also the result of the rise of the Chinese auto industry. In fact, Japanese car companies have been working hard all the time. Their products are constantly updated and iterated. The gearboxes and engines have been updated generation after generation, and the exterior design is also advancing with the times. So, what led to the sharp decline of Japanese car sales in China? Okay, let's figure it out in today's video. From a global perspective, the decline of Japanese cars is actually not obvious. Toyota's global sales in 2022 was about 10.483 million vehicles, ranking first in global car sales for the third consecutive year. Among them, Toyota's overseas sales were about 8.5766 million vehicles, setting a new record. According to the 2022 global car sales ranking data, Toyota is still the world's number one, Nissan Alliance is fourth, and Honda is seventh. In terms of global sales alone, the number of Japanese cars increased in 2022 compared to last year. However, for the Chinese market, the sales volume of Japanese products fell sharply in 2022. The sales volume fell by 10.3%, and the market share directly fell below 20%. Undoubtedly, against the background of rising domestic automobile production and sales in China, this especially highlights the decline of Japanese cars in China. In 2022, China's auto production and sales reached 27.021 million and 26.86 for million, with year-on-year -year growth of 3.4% and 2.1%, ranking first in the world for 14 years in a row. There is only one reason here, and that is what Musk said recently, that the competition for new energy vehicles in the Chinese market is the fiercest. Looking at the retail sales of Chinese new energy manufacturers in 2022, we can see that, except for Tesla, the top 15 are basically Chinese domestic brands, and there is no new energy brand related to Japanese companies. Maybe many people will say that Japan is unlucky and the hydrogen energy route has been abandoned, otherwise Japan will continue to maintain its position as the overlord of automobiles. But now Japan's new energy route of transforming lithium battery vehicles has started too late. Ten years ago, I was not stingy about praising the Japanese, and it was all-round praise. The engines with medium and large displacements completely beat the German opponents. Later, Toyota defeated GM and Volkswagen successively, and won the world's first sales. At the same time, the Japanese department plans to replicate its success in North America to China. But the Chinese market is completely different. At that time, no one would pay attention to domestic brands such as BYD and Geely. Almost at the same time, a programmer in the West said that I wanted to build an electric car. When the Japanese bigwigs heard this, they almost laughed out loud. Before the laugh was over, the market value of the programmer's car company became three times that of Toyota. Although Toyota relied on huge discounts in 2022, it still achieved its first sales decline in China in a decade. Today, when Chinese car companies and other joint venture car companies are developing V2X, vehicle to everything, in full swing, Japanese car companies are still struggling with is this thing compulsory in China? If not, why do we bother to increase the cost? It can be seen that Japanese executives never come to China to gain an in-depth understanding of the market, resulting in a complete mismatch between their products and China's new competitive landscape. Finally, there are two recent news worth reading together, one is that BYD is planning to buy Ford's Salui plant in Germany, the other is that Akio Toyoda announced that he will leave his job in April this year. Well, time never speaks, but time will tell.
Of course, in the 1980s and 1990s, Japanese products were synonymous with high-end and expensive, especially electronic products. It's a pity that today's Japanese seem to have been immersed in that era, they don't want to admit their shortcomings. For example, the head of Toyota, Akio Toyoda, has publicly expressed doubts about electric vehicles more than once. Recently, the chief scientist of Toyota even said bluntly, battery electric mode is wrong. At the same time, the Japanese are also unwilling to recognize the progress of others. For example, they always look down on China. From top to bottom, Japan likes to badmouth China, turning a blind eye to China's progress, let alone researching it. If you go to a Japanese bookstore, you will find that books on China's collapse have been selling like hotcakes for more than 10 years. Well, this kind of arrogance means ignoring the crisis. In recent years, China's manufacturing industry has been continuously upgraded. The important reason is the sense of crisis. It is worried about the US blockade every day. It has built large ships, high-speed rails, large aircrafts and then chips. Chinese people are also very strict with Chinese manufacturing. You know, manufacturing is never-ending. For a manufacturing country, this sense of crisis is necessary, and Japan's arrogance obviously made them lose this sense of aggressiveness. What's more terrible is that it has become very conservative. The Japanese manufacturing industry has gradually been replaced in the past 20 years. A very important reason is that the country's thinking has become as conservative as in the late Qing dynasty. Japan is conservative and unwilling to authorize hydrogen energy patents. In addition, the conservativeness of the Japanese folk is also incredible. During the epidemic, there was a news that shocked the Chinese people. When China had already implemented information technology to process epidemic information, Japan was still using fax machines to report cases. The reason is that everyone is used to using fax machines and is unwilling to submit through the internet. But in the past 20 years, the elderly in China have been forced to learn WeChat, learn short videos, and learn to place orders on the internet. The epidemic has made the elderly learn to scan QR codes. Japan's conservatism is all-encompassing, and so is its high-speed rail. Japan's high-speed rail is quite good, but its overseas performance is lackluster. It even lost to the rising star China's high-speed rail in Indonesia's Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail competition. The root cause is still conservative thinking. In China, the era is almost dragging the Chinese people's arms to run forward, because the Chinese people are too aware of the truth that if they fall behind, they will be beaten. China once paid a heavy price and endured nearly a hundred years of humiliation. That era is the late Qing dynasty. Today, the Chinese people have learned from the pain and are catching up. The whole society believes that reform is always on the way and bravely accepts new things. Even the elderly will not refuse to change. But Japan is not. Today's Japan always reminds me of China's late Qing dynasty. The scene of arrogance and conservatism reappears like yesterday, and natural decline has become inevitable. Of course, the deep-seated reason for the decline of Japanese cars is, Chinese independent brands have become stronger. There is no doubt that the current so-called decline of Japanese products is mainly in the Chinese market, and sales of Japanese products in other markets such as Europe and the United States have not declined. In other words, even if the Japanese company's wrong route leads to setbacks in the Chinese market, the Japanese company's layout and strength in the traditional auto industry are still top-notch, and other countries have not transformed as efficiently as China. Therefore, from the perspective of global automobiles, Japanese cars are still in their heyday in recent years, and it is too early to say that they are declining. However, the decline of the brand of Japanese car companies is irreversible. And this is also the manifestation of national strategy and competitiveness. Japanese brands still haven't invested in the virtuous cycle of independent R&D and active product competition in the North American market. Especially in the Chinese market, they encounter more difficult market competition than the US and Europe, and further decline is inevitable. Therefore, 
in my opinion, Japanese cars are not only losing ground in China, but in Southeast Asia, Europe, and the rest of the non-political markets, the overall retreat of Japanese cars is inevitable. So far, the highlight moment of the Japanese department has come to an end. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Do you want to learn about more auto stories? Please keep following our channel and like our videos. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.